All right, so we're still in part one um, on page 31, 31, and Hideki is now telling his side of the story, and we open up where they're in this cave. So remember where we last saw them, they were all going to go attack. That was their big plan. They were going to go help whatever Americans got through the Japanese forces, and they're expecting not many Americans. But as they hear this bombing, they realize, eh, this is a little more real than we anticipated. And so they all go hide out in this cave. And while most of the young uh, boy soldiers are hiding kind of towards the back of the cave, hanging out, uh, Hideki wants no part of being around them. Remember, these are the guys that want to do the gauntlet of fists and bully him. And he says, I'll just hang out near the mouth of the cave. Like, yeah, it's closer to the danger, but I'd rather be near the American soldiers than Yoshio, which tells you how bad they must have tormented him. So he's hanging out there and he's watching it, but he's telling us this story, this like flashback story of what happened to him to get him involved in the military. That that wasn't the original plan. His dad and sister were joining the Japanese army. His sister is a nurse and his dad, right? right? And they were going uh, onto like their, their ship. And then he and his younger brother and his mom were going off um, somewhere else. And in the meantime, as he's saying goodbye to his dad and sister and trying to run to catch up with his mom, a Japanese soldier catches him and asks him how old he is because they're trying to recruit people to help them in the military. And he says he's 13, almost 14, so he's still just a kid. And the guy says, oh, no, that's old enough to be a part of the military. You can come join up now. And his sister, bless it, she tries to keep him out of the military, but the way she does it is kind of mortifying to him. And I want you to kind of imagine how you'd feel. But she's like, oh, no, 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 he can't. You see, like 350 years ago, we had this ancestor who was like a real embarrassment and he brought shame to our family and he was a coward. And now every third generation that happens in our family and... Yep, Hideki got that bad luck. And so he's a coward too. He can't help it. He was just born that way. He has to be a coward for life. Which she's trying to protect him. But how embarrassing is that? To be told, you know, that to be said in front of everyone. And in response, the soldier um, basically calls him an animal. uh, Like he calls him a derogatory term. But he gets swept up into the military And his, he chooses, he says, no, I'm ready. I want to be brave. And his sister's like, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're going to die. But he's willing to go for this. He wants to bring bravery back to his family. So he's, he's still um, like a sweet kid though. He doesn't have this mindset of go and attack and kill like some of the other boys do. And so he's sitting at the, the entrance to this cave. He knows that the Americans are getting really close. And an Okinawan family, one of their own, comes up to the entrance of the cave and says, we need help. We need a place to stay. And in Hideki's mind, he's there to protect. That's his job. So he says, yeah, come on in. And Yoshio's like, nope. It's almost like a, like in the movie, The Little Rascals, the He-Man Woman Haters Club. It's like, nope, this is just for us military boys. You got to leave. Too bad. And as they hear the, the tanks getting closer, the family... They peace out. They're really upset. They're crying. They're scared. They're looking for a place to go. And Hideki decides this is his chance to be brave. There's a whole bunch of tanks down on that road and trucks. I could throw one of these grenades and take out a whole bunch of them. And Yoshio stops them and is like, no, they're really close. We're all going to go attack. It's going to be great. Let's do that instead. And so that's where we leave off with those boys.